Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In this video, we're going to talk about inference endpoints. Inference endpoints is a new service that we just launched to make it very simple to deploy transformers from the Hugging Face Hub to manage infrastructure on your favorite cloud. And simplicity doesn't come at the expense of production grade quality, scalability, and security. Let me show you. In this demo, I'm going to reuse a model that I already trained. In fact, it's one of my recent videos where I showed you how to um, fine tune an image classification model with auto train on the Food 101 dataset. So you can go and watch that one uh, if you want to know how the, how the model was built. Uh, here, I'll just start directly from the model. Okay, so this is the model that uh, we trained. Okay, and this is the Food 101 dataset, which, as the name implies, has 101 classes for different types of food. Okay, it's a fun dataset to work with. So anyway, the model is ready here. And uh, if I go and uh, click and deploy, I can see I can deploy straight away to inference endpoints. So the model repo has been selected. Let's just use maybe another um, another name for this, so it's a SWIN model, let's call it SWIN Food 101 Demo 1, okay? Then I can select a cloud provider, uh, at the time of recording we support AWS and uh, Microsoft Azure, and I'll just go and select AWS because, you know, that's the one I know better. And why don't we go and deploy in the Ireland region, EU West 1. And, you know, we could keep it at that, but hey, let's click on advanced configuration. Uh, we can pick an instance type. So we get different options for CPUs and GPUs. Uh, yeah, let's be, let's be conservative and let's keep a medium-sized CPU, I can set up auto-scaling, so maybe I don't want to auto-scale, maybe I want a single instance, you know, because it's just a, a very low traffic endpoint, so no need for that. I can see the task type, the framework have been filled in automatically. I could enter the revision of the model. By default, we'll use the latest version, but if you want to uh, deploy a previous version of the model that's uh, in the repo, uh, you can just enter the, the commit here. And I could also use a custom image um, that I bring instead of using the built-in container that comes with uh, uh, inference endpoints, okay? But let's not do that. Let's keep it simple for now. Um, I guess the most important setting here is um, what's the security level of the model? So public means, uh, you know, it's open on the internet and, you know, no authentication is required. So anyone on the public internet can use that endpoint without any authentication. So maybe that's what you want, maybe not, you know, think twice of the, maybe the security, the privacy and the cost concerns. Um, but I would say most likely what you want to do is either protected or private and we'll do both, okay? And I'll start with protected. So protected means the endpoint is going to be created in a public subnet uh, managed by Hugging Face, but you will need to provide um, a Hugging Face token to access the endpoint. Okay, so that's a decent first level of security. Okay, and we'll do private afterwards. So let's just uh, go and uh, create that endpoint. Click on this. And it's going to run for a few minutes. Uh, we can see it's building the container with the model that I selected um, and provisioning all the infrastructure. We can see uh, we can see the logs here if we're interested. OK, but for now, I'll just pause the video and I'll be back when the endpoint is ready. OK, for a minute or two, the endpoint is ready. We see the endpoint URL. OK. And of course, we should be able to test it. So let's just go, I have an image here, okay. One of my favorite foods ever, right? Hopefully yours too. Let's go and drag this. And 
Yes. Okay. Very, very high probability. Probably higher than 0.9999 something. That it is indeed hummus. Marvelous hummus. Okay. Um, but probably what we really want to do is we want to run some code, right? So this is how uh, we would actually go and uh, and test this. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, URL of the endpoint. Uh, this is my token, which I'm sorry, you won't get to see. Um, I build headers with the token and the content type, right? And then I just use the request library to send an HTTP post request to the endpoint. Okay, and uh, and we should see the same prediction. Okay, so why don't I run this code? Just copy this stuff here and put it in a terminal here. Hopefully we see some probabilities now. Yes. Okay, so 0 0.9998, <laughs> it is almost. Okay, that's it. Uh, this is how you deploy uh, an inference endpoint in just literally, you know, minutes uh, on managed infrastructure. You know, you could have auto scaling in place. Uh, you have authentication in place and, you know, it's backed by AWS infrastructure. So probably fairly solid. And, you know, it's just a vanilla HTTP endpoint that you can use just like this. Okay. Pretty cool. Uh, there are a few more things you may want to look at. Um, if we go here, I will see, I will see some statistics, latency, um, two XX invocations, four XX invocations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we have the logs, so we have the build logs, and we actually also have the invocation logs, right? So we can see the the two invocations I've done here, right? So easier for debugging should you need that. Okay, so that's really it. Uh, as simple as that. Um, now, let me show you how to do a private deployment. Creating a private endpoint means that the endpoint will not be accessible on the internet. It's going to be deployed in a private subnet inside of uh, the Hugging Face account. And we will connect and you will connect uh, this endpoint to your own AWS account using an AWS service called AWS Private Link. And what that really means is uh, we'll do the setup on our side and then in your AWS account, you need to create a VPC endpoint that connects back to our account so that the inference endpoint is visible in one of your VPCs and in uh, whatever subnets you, you select there, okay? Uh, it's not a complicated procedure. If you're not familiar with private link, I will put all the documentation in the video description. Um, so let's just go and, uh, and create the endpoints, um, do the um, hogging face side of the of the job so to speak so i just set a different name for the endpoint we're still using aws in e west one and this time we're going with private and you need to enter the id of the aws account that will access the endpoint okay so don't get it wrong because otherwise nothing will work okay uh, and of course you can find this id in the aws console or with the uh, AWS CLI uh, should be difficult. Okay, so that's all it takes. Enter your AWS account and click on create endpoint. Okay, so it's going to do some setup on the hugging face side and then it's going to pause and we'll switch to uh, the AWS console to complete the setup on the customer side, so to speak. Right, so if you're a little bit confused, this is what really things will look like once we're done. Um, yeah, maybe close this and zoom in on this, which is the interesting bit. Okay. So within the same region, uh, we have two accounts. Uh, we have the service provider account and VPC, which is of course, hugging face, hosting the endpoint in a private subnet. And on the other side, we have the, the consumer VPC. So in, in the customer account, in your account, and this is where we'll need to create that VPC endpoint 
that can connect your instances to uh, the endpoint, uh, the inference endpoint in our own account. Okay, so don't confuse the inference endpoint, which is really um, the prediction API, and the VPC endpoint, which is just you know, a channel that connects the, the two accounts. Okay, so let's wait a couple of minutes for the setup to be ready on the, on the provider side, and then we'll do the consumer side, okay? After a minute or two, uh, you should see this. Uh, you should see that uh, VPC service name, okay? And so when you see this, it means, okay, uh, we've done our side of the, of the job, okay? Our part of the job. And now you need to switch to the AWS console to complete and authorize the connection between our account and your account. Okay, so let's let's keep this name. Okay, we're gonna need it. And let's just go to this page. Okay. And so where am I here? Uh, I am in the VPC console in the endpoint section. Okay, so that's where I am. And we'll just click on create endpoint. Let's give it a name. Uh, so let's give it the same name as the model, maybe. That's convenient. There we go. Um, we're trying to connect to um, another endpoint service, okay? You can use VPC endpoints for AWS services or AWS Marketplace. Here we have an existing service, and that's the name we just uh, copied. So let's verify that the name exists, is correct. Okay, not difficult. And then we need to select a VPC. Okay, um, so that endpoint will be created in a dedicated VPC. In this account, I just have a default VPC. So simple enough. And then I can pick the subnets where the VPC endpoint will be accessible. Okay. So I'll just go and select all three subnets in this VPC. But it could be that, you know, maybe it's just one VPC you want, uh, uh, one subnet, excuse me, uh, you want to give access to, okay? So you don't have to click them all. Just click the ones where you're going to run um, instances, uh, applications that need to access this endpoint privately, okay? Uh, let's just go and use IPv4. Next, we need to assign a security group. Uh, just like every time we do networking on AWS. And this will restrict uh, ports, for example, that are open between uh, the endpoint and the instances, okay? So keep in mind, only uh, resources running in those subnets uh, will be able to access the endpoint. But, you know, you may want to further restrict things. Uh, and I think I've got one here already. Okay, and this one is actually not very restrictive at all, but um, good enough for my demo. And I think that's it. So I can just click on endpoint. And it's going to do, you know, it's going to do that connection as we as we saw in the in the documentation, right? And it's going to connect the two accounts. Okay, it just took a few more seconds. <laughs> we should have waited. Uh, so now it's available and we're good to go. So what now? Now we have this connection between the, the consumer account and the producer account, okay? So we can test the endpoints, right? So what I've done is um, we have created an EC2 instance, which we could see here, okay? And there's really nothing special about it. It's just a plain instance. You just need to make sure, of course, it's in the VPC that's connected and in one of the subnets that, uh, that you uh, gave um, um, access to. Okay, so I guess it'll make sense, right? So the instance is up, I've created it here. Okay, and now we can try to call the endpoint. So first things first, I will need the name of that endpoint, which I see here, okay? So let me grab that, update my script, and we'll test it. So in my code, I've simply updated the URL, right? Um, for the endpoint. 
to point at this private endpoint. Okay, just just to be on the safe side, this is the endpoint URL, right? Don't go and try invoking this. This is just a VPC name for AWS. You know, it's it's nothing like the uh, URL. Okay, this is what you want to use, right? And so now I can just go grab this on my instance and invoke it. Okay. And of course we see predictions, right? And if I try this, why don't I try this on my own machine? See how it goes. So let's log out. So I'm back on my Mac. Let's put Python again. Ah, of course it's not working because this endpoint is not visible on the internet, right? So that's what we wanted. So security works. You'll be blocked forever. Okay. Well, that's really it. Um, that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, we could do more videos on you know scaling and maybe we'll do custom containers and, and there are uh, more features coming, of course, <laughs> as you would expect. But as you can see, this is really, really simple. Uh, you can really go and deploy your endpoints in a few click uh, or with curl. And, um, and you can pick the level of security that works for you. And then invoking the endpoints is just as easy as a few lines of Python. Okay, so give it a try. Let us know what you think. And uh, let, us, let us know what you would like to see next in the service. Okay, uh, that, that's super useful. All right, well, that's it for this video. I hope you learned a few things. And as usual, keep rocking.